Hello, everybody. This is uh, Ron Dittmar talking to you from the Erasmus Academy Recording Studios in Brooklyn, New York. And this is the beginning of a, a series on uh, continuing, actually, with the poem Der Dichter from, from uh, Hermann Hesse. And um, we have together uh, uh, for us today uh, our guest speaker, um, um, who is uh, CJ. CJ, you want to introduce yourself? Hello again. Great. So CJ has been our guest speaker uh, earlier. Uh, if you've been following the series, you may have heard him uh, before. So um, this is the continuation of this poem uh, called Der Dieter, the Poet, and its lines, as you see in the title, 67 to 120. And uh, what I'm going to do is just translate this. Let's see if you can see my mark here. Um, can you see on the screen, uh, CJ, the mark, the green mark? Yep. Okay, great. So um, I'm just going to translate this little passage here to give you the context um, of the poem. And uh, do you want to just uh, summarize very briefly the, the beginning of the poem and sort of uh, its direction um, briefly or uh, CJ? Or... Sure. Okay, go ahead. Sure, I'll go ahead. Um, so it's it's concerning the a poet, a fic, uh, who I believe to be a fictional Chinese poet who he names uh, Han Fuk, mm -hmm. who is... Um, He's a, a wealthy up and coming poet who's kind of becoming known um, within literary circles in China in a I don't think the the, the centuries determined so in some in some dynasty um, and he is about to be married uh, and everyone's happy about that too and, every, and every, everything's wonderful for him in terms of uh, you know the standard expectations of how uh, a wealthy young man should be getting along in life, um, but he's he's kind of alienated, and uh, he and he and he feels that in order to pursue um, his career as a poet, um, in order to become truly what full Coleman or like perfect or full <laughs> um, in terms of his composition, that he has to kind of um, uh, abandon. Uh, some of these societal demands, and you know, become more ascetic. Some um, some of the joys of after society. Encounter, yeah, mm -hmm. from the joys of, or or from the obligations of uh, of a household mm -hmm. and a and a wife and um, family and friends. Um, and even though he 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 knows that he's popular among his own friends, um, he 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 still feels that he's kind of um, uh, you know, young, uh, mediocre, and young and just starting on his poetic journey, so he's got to he's got to go on a, a real adventure and abandon society or something. <laughs> yeah, and and then he uh, also earlier in the poem he encounters this this uh, older man who appears to him uh, in some mystical way and sort of calls him uh, up to uh, you know a higher level of perfection in his poetry to come visit him at his hut up in the mountains somewhere. So uh, that's sort of where this uh, picks up here. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to uh, translate this. Uh, that, that's really a great introduction. Uh, thanks, CJ. So um, so okay. starting out here, Darüber würde er traurig, and I'm not going to analyze this, but just translate this, and then we'll start translating where you see the number one there. Uh, about that, he became sad and sah nach, and he reflected about this matter. And the goal of his thoughts was this, dieses, that uh, to uh, that um, uh, he could uh, obtain uh, das er zu um, werden könnte that he could obtain a, a true uh, happiness or fortune and a, and a deep satisfaction only at that time when when um, when he would uh, succeed once in doing what in in um, uh, in reflect in reflecting the world so completely in poets that that he um, would possess um, it possess in these mirror images the world itself uh, and then it talks about refer to the world purified and immortalized for avic uh, avic means eternal so made eternal in some sense okay so that's just sort of a uh, just a sentence the uh, few lines before the passage where we're going to start. So our normal procedure will follow again this time, and I'll read out loud, and uh, CJ will repeat after me. Um, 
and and then um, <clears throat> please repeat with him to get a sense of the flow of the words and the pronunciation. And then I'll ask him specific questions to unpack the grammar of the sentences. <clears throat> and then um, uh, try to imagine in your own mind what the answers would be. And then we'll go through and then, then uh, gradually uh, develop a translation that we can all sort of uh, reach at the same time. Okay, so here we go. Kaum wusste Han Fu, ob er noch wache oder eingeschlummert sei. Everybody? Kaum wusste Han Fu, ob er noch wache oder eingeschlummert sei. Als er ein leises Geräusch vernahm. Als er ein leises Geräusch vernahm. Und neben dem Baumstamm einen Unbekannten stehen sah. Und neben dem Baumstamm einen Unbekannten stehen sah. Okay, so let's go uh, up to here. Um, let's see. And as you're looking at these longer sentences, and the sentence goes all the way down to here, it's very important to distinguish between the main clauses and the subordinate clauses to sort of ferret out the, the structure or the syntax of these longer sentences. So um, in this this first clause here, is this, a main, is this the main clause or a subordinate clause? Yeah, the main clause. Good. So wusste is the main verb. So hardly Han Fuk knew. And then everything follows. Uh, what he knew is a sort of a elaboration of, of or delineation of what he knew. Whether, uh, let's see, um, going down to here, ob er noch wache oder eingeschlummert sei, uh, what what um, mood are these? Is, it, is this indicative or subjunctive? Um, here's your first verb. Subjunctive. Good. So German will revert, will move over to the subjunctive if there's anything that's hypothetical, um, uh, subjective or, or not factual. Um, so hardly, Kung Fu hardly knew whether he um, was still awake, wache, or had uh, eingeschlafen. He, to the right are the words that are given, and einschlummern um, is a less common word. So the way that they give you the uh, meaning of the words is to uh, show that, that it's equivalent to a word that you uh, more commonly would encounter. Okay. Um, uh, and then just going on. Als er ein leises Geräusch vernahmen, vernahm und neben dem Baumstamm einen Unbekannten stehen sah. So from here, uh, let me just erase the marks. I normally do this occasionally so we can focus more on what we're uh, doing at the moment. Um, from here down to here, uh, CJ, uh, where's the um, up to this comma? up to this und here. Where, where's the verb? Fernam. Fernam. Okay, that's so the fernamen means to hear as it indicates to the right or to perceive something as he perceived. Uh, and obviously air is a subject. And what's the direct object? Um, ein leises Geräusch. Good. So we, we indicate the direct object with a circle. So if you really want to uh, um, analyze this graphically, uh, you could draw an arrow from the verb, which is a transitive verb, to the direct object, which is the accusative. Um, good. And how do you know the gender of this, of Geräusch? Uh, neuter because of the ES at the end of Lysis. Good, good, great. Okay. Um, let's see. And then from here, und, down to sa, where's the verb complex? Um, so, stehen sa. Good. Uh, so this is from se and to see, and uh, it's a past tense. And he, or a, as he saw, uh, and where's the direct object? Um, so that would be einen Unbekannten. Good. Uh, now, this is not a plural noun. Uh, this is what we call the end nouns. And especially if you have a noun made from an adjective. So Unbekannt is just an adjective, unknown. And But if you make it a noun with a capital letter, then the en is added there because it's in the accusative case simply, uh, which is characteristic of these n noun uh, class of, of nouns, of words. Okay, um, let's see. Why don't you just translate uh, for everybody right down to say and saw from the, from the beginning, calm, just to slowly okay. so we can follow you. So hardly did Han Fook know uh, whether he was still awake or um, you know had fallen asleep. When he uh, perceived, um, uh, you know, a, this was kind of like a, a light rustling or, mm -hmm. you know, 
um, and um, and saw standing near the tree trunk an unknown person or Good. unknown man. Great. You could do it that way, or you could say and saw an unknown man uh, um, standing next to a tree trunk. Uh, either way. Okay. And then going on, ein an alten Mann. So. Um, uh, what what do we term this um, going on with this accusative, um, CJ? Apposition. Good, an apposition to. To um, einen Unbekannten. Exactly, yeah. So he saw standing accusative, a, an unknown person. And then they're going to explain uh, with this apposition a further description of who this un per, uh, unknown person is. However, German requires that since this is is a further explanation of this it still requires it that this be in the accusative case so he saw standing an unknown man uh, an unknown one uh, an old man in a violet um it says garment and with ehrwürdigen with um dignified air this is actually plural okay going on um let's read it together er richtete sich auf everybody Er richtete sich auf und begrüßte ihn mit dem Gruß. Und begrüßte ihn mit dem Gruß, der den Greisen und Vornehmen zukommt. Der den Greisen und Vornehmen zukommt. Okay, let me just raise this. Uh, I'm just going to scoot up a little bit too. Um, let's see. Just one second here. Okay, you can see we go down to the, the point uh, where it says number two. Uh, let me just see where we are again here. Okay, so um, so uh, it, right here is where we are. Uh, where's the verb complex up to here? Richtete <laughs> sich uh, Good, okay. So um, auf is, what do we call auf, which goes together with richten? Um, the removed prefix or delayed prefix or <laughs> separable prefix yeah separable prefix you, there you go you've got the idea though uh so and this is the reflexive so he he stood uh he stood up or he stood himself up you could say if you want to include the reflexive uh and going on where's the next verb the grusta yeah and uh and where's the direct object in good and and he he greets. So this is a uh, Han Fuchs standing up and seeing this old this uh, gentleman, and he, he greet, greeted him with a with a with a greeting, Gruß. And then what does this dare refer back to? Um, dame Gruß. Good. This is the, the relative pronoun introducing a relative clause, and it has as its antecedent Gruß. Remember that the form of this relative pronoun has three determinants. The gender and the number of its antecedent, and the role that it, and the third one is the role that it plays in the subordinate clause. Uh, so it actually serves as the subject of the subordinate clause. And he greeted him greeted him with the greeting, which and then zu kommt, which comes to, or if you look at the idiomatic expression here, which is do, and old and distinguished old and distinguished men, um, which is due to old gentlemen, you could say, and to uh, distinguished uh, gentlemen. Okay, um, going on. Der Fremde aber lächelte und sprach einige Verse. Everybody? Der Fremde aber lächelte und sprach einige Verse. In denen war alles. In denen war alles. Was der junge Mann so eben empfunden hatte. Was der junge Mann so eben empfunden hatte. Okay, so um, so he stood up and greeted him with a greet, which uh, that we did this. Um, then going on, uh, from here, der Freunde, up to here, where's the verb? Uh, lächelte. Yeah, it means he smiled. And and then here's another verb, is sprach. Yes. Uh, remember the three principal parts of of, spra of this verb? Uh, sprechen, sprach, is broken. Good, great, fantastic. It's always important to know the three principal parts. And there, that's all there are of German verbs, not five or six. Um, <laughs> and this, <laughs> this is just the past tense of an irregular verb because it's vowel, there's a vowel change as it moves from the present, from sprechen to usually sprach. Usually aren't blank, blank, blanks either, which is good. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so the, the, the stranger, however, laughed and spoke some verses. <clears throat> and then what does in Danish refer back to? 
uh, the verses. Yeah, it's antecedents verses, in which was everything. Now, th this is an indeterminate alis, so uh, you always have the vas if if this is going to be um, it's antis it's, if if an alis is going to be explained, then it, it will be explained with a with vas instead of a definite article, and in, in which there was everything which, and then uh, where's the verb of that clause? Empfunden hatte. And that means? Uh, had felt. Yeah, in which the young man had had just now felt. Um, and and then what he felt is then expressed later on. Let's go on. So vollkommen und schön und nach den Regeln der großen Dichter ausgedrückt. Everybody? So vollkommen und schön und nach den Regeln der großen Dichter ausgedrückt. Okay, so when you come across a phrase like this, because this is really going to exp explain what he had felt, um, and you have a, a past participle or a present participle at the end of the clause, what do we call that clause? Uh, just a, um, a participial phrase. Exactly, a participial phrase. So in that case, you normally and, and uh, most logically begin with this. So uh, what, he, what he had just felt uh, expressed, so, and this is an adverb, so completely and beautifully and uh, according to the rules of the great poets. So, uh, so, so wonderfully expressed, etc. That, with the result that, and then uh, where's the verb? Um, the Stillstand. Yeah, so this is from Stillstand, a past tense, to stand still, simply. <laughs> Because there are a lot of uh, words that are com that come directly into English from German, to stand still, so that 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 the heart, the heart of the young man, and and you'll see um, the the translation here, um, which really renders this um, idiom uh, to make it to have it make sense. Literally, that 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 the heart stood still of the young man uh, bef uh, before amazement, or and you could say as the youth's heart almost stopped in wonder. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let, if you just treat, translate from here, so we can follow you again uh, slowly. Um, he stood up right there into the to the last um, part of the section here. CJ. Okay. Uh, he stood himself up and greeted him with the greeting, which belongs or which is fitting um, to the old and distinguished men, um, who or the str the stranger, however, smiled and spoke some verses mm -hmm. in which was everything that the young man just now had felt mm -hmm. so perfectly and beautifully expressed and even according to the rules of the great poets that the that the young man's heart um stood still in amazement fantastic you notice that um cj uh, actually didn't start this phrase, a participial phrase with ausgedrückt, which you can do because these are adverbs. He said so perfectly and beautifully expressed, which is nice. You know, it's a nice variation of instead of starting with uh, expressed. I honestly just forgot, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, was very, it was very smooth. <laughs> okay. Well, we went over a little bit today uh, just because we had the introduction uh, again and, and trying to set the setting and the context here. But uh, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, thanks for tuning in. Talk to you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.